Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will learn about Visual Basic. We will use Visual Studio 2010 for creating Visual Basic projects. You can create project using file menu. In file menu, go to new and select project or you can create new project from start page also. So click on the new project to create window application using the visual basic first you have to select languages so we are selecting visual basic and we want to create windows form application so select windows form application give name to that application i am giving first app and press ok so it will create project solution and now we will see how to create forms and how we can use these forms in our application. So we can see one form is created. So this is the toolbox from which we can select various types of tool and we can use that tools in our form. We can see various tool is available. We will see all these tools in further videos but currently we are selecting just button we can see one button is created now to set the property of the button right click on the property right now to set the property of the button right click on the button and select properties we are setting its name property first to btn press and text property which is used to show the which text will be display on the buttons caption so i am giving click me now double click on the button so automatically one code is generated in coding side now i want to show the message box on the click of the button so write message box so intelligence will be autom so intelligence automatically display one pop up menu so select message box and give value into message box function i want to display hello this is my first program save and to run the application go to start debugging or press F5. So we can see now application is running and form is displayed. Now when we click on the button, let's see what happens. We can see one message box is displayed and we can see the hello this is my first program message box is displayed. So this is about visual basic and creating our first application. We can also create object oriented application using the Visual Studio 2010. So this is the basic funda of Visual Studio 2010 and Visual Basic. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will learn how to set properties of various controls. So we have already created one application of calculator. Now let's add one more form into our application. To add a new form, go to Solution Explorer, right click on the main application and click on add new item. Now I want to add window form, so click on the window form, give name to the form, I am giving properties and click on the add so new form will be added so in this example we will see how to set properties of the form we have already set the properties of the control like text box label control and button control we can also set properties of the form so to set the property of the form right click on the form and select properties to display the title of the form, text property is used. 
if you change the tax property then that property will change the title of the form if i want to set simple example then title of the form will be changed here we can see the title of the form is changed we can also set various property like back color background image background image layout and various other properties so on the page load event i want to set the property which is the back color of the form then let's code it to change the background property background color property of the form so i want to set the property of current form so me is used me dot back color is equal to color dot select the color which you want to set i want to set cyan and enter so when the page will be loaded the color property of the form will be changed on page load event now we have two forms one is the properties and other is the form one now i want to set startup form so so to set the startup form go to the project main application pro properties and select startup form as a properties now our startup form is properties now let's run we can see the color of the form is changed which is done on the page load event of the form we can also change the color property or any property on the click event or any controls event so let's do it on the click event of the button so i want to set various value of the rgb and according that i want to change the color property of the form so i am designing form to do this so you can see we have created one form which accept the three values of r g and b now when we click on the button which is the change button the color of the form will be changed according to the value which is entered into the tax boxes so let's code to do this click on the change button and declare three variable r g b now i am storing the txt r's value into r variable now i want to set the back color property of the form so write me dot back color is equal to i want to set the property of the form using this argument so so write color dot form argb pass the value of the variable into form argb and now let's run this form enter the value from 0 to 255 to 30 and blue value into 2 click on the change we can see the color will be changed according to the value of r g and b passed into the tax box so this is how we can set the various properties of the forms and any control so this is about how to set various property of various controls and forms thank you welcome friends in this video tutorial we will learn about object oriented programming so let's first see the difference between vb6 and vb.net vb2010 which is a vb.net platform is a very much similar to vb6 in terms of interface and program structure their underlying concept are quite different the main difference is that vb2010 is a full object oriented programming language while vb6 may have op capabilities it is not fully object oriented in order to qualify as a fully object oriented programming language it must have to three 
core technologies namely encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism so let's first see the polymorphism object oriented programming allows procedures about objects to be created whose exact type is not known until runtime for example a cursor may change its shape from an arrow to line depending on the program mode the routine to move the cursor on screen in response to mouse movement would be written for a cursor and polymorphism allows that cursor to take on whatever shape required at run time so this is about polymorphism now let's see encapsulation encapsulation refers to the creation of self contained modules that bind processing function to the data the user defined data types are called classes each class contains data as well as set of methods which manipulate the data the data component of class are called instance variable and instance of class is an object now let's see inheritance classes are created according to hierarchies and inheritance allows the structure and methods in one class to be passed down the hierarchy that means less programming is required when adding function to complex system if step is added at the bottom of hierarchy then only processing and data associated with that unique step needs to be added so everything else about that step is inherited so this is about inheritance there is no more difference between vb6 and vb.net but main difference between the vb and vb.net is object oriented vb6 is not a object oriented but vb.net is a pure object oriented lang language so this is about object oriented programming in visual studio 2010 thank you welcome friends in this video tutorial we will learn about how to write code in application so we have already seen how to write code but in this example we will see various types of event which can be executed and we can execute that event on particular circumstance so let's see what types of event is in form so go to the property first and click on this icon which is for events we can see in the event tab there are lots of event which is activated auto size and these all are the event which is executed on particular circumstance so let's see the load event load event is executed when form is loaded into the memory so when we click on the load event the coding part of the event is written automatically so if you want to do something on the load event then we can write code for this event in coding side so this is the subroutine or function which is written for this event we can see the name of the event is also written which is the load and this is our form name writing code now let's set the property of the label dynamically i want to set label 1 for color property to color dot cyan so this will set the for color of the label at page load now i want to also change the background color of the form so write me dot back color which is used to set the current form's back color and color dot yellow now let's run this application and see the effect we can see on the page load event the background color and for color of label is set so this is about how to execute event and how to write code on the particular event so this is the event which is load event we can also create events of button which we have seen in previous example and that when we click on the button particular code is executed so this is all about events thank you welcome friends 
In this video tutorial, we will learn about how to manage data. First, let's see what is data. There are many types of data that we come across in our daily life. For example, we need to handle data such as the names, addresses, money, debt, etc. Similarly, in Visual Basic 2010, we have to deal with all sort of data. Some can be mathematically calculated while some are in the form of text or other form. VB 2010 divides data into different types so that it is easier to manage when we need to write the code involving those data. First let's see numeric data types. Numeric data types are types of data that consist of numbers which can be computed mathematically with various standard operators such as add, minus, multiply, divide and so on. Example of numeric data types are your examination marks, your height, your weight, the number of students in class, share values, price of good, monthly bills, fees, etc. So let's see various types which is a numeric data type. First is a byte which contains range of values from 0 to 255. Second is the integer which is mostly used data type. The range of integer data type is from minus 32,768 to 32,767. Similarly, long data type is used to store the large value. We have also single data type which is used to store positive and negative values. And if we want to store more and more large value then we can use double data type. Currency data type is used to store the value like money, rupees, etc. And decimal is used to store decimal values. So this is about numeric data types. Now let's see non-numeric data types. Non-numeric data types are data that cannot be manipulated mathematically using standard arithmetic operator. The non-numeric data type comprises text or string data types, the date data types, the boolean data types that store only two values, true or false. Object data type and variant data type are also non-numeric data type. So let's see which are the non-numeric data type. First, string which is used to store text value is a non-numeric. Date is used to store the date. Boolean value stores only two values, true or false. Object data type is the highest level data type which is used to store any data type. Variant is also like a object but it stores only numeric value. Variant for text is also like a object which is used to store the text value. So this is about non-numeric data type. Now let's see constant. We have already seen the variables and how to declare variables in previous example and how to also use that variable in our application. Now let's see constant. Constant are different from variables in the sense that their value do not change during the running of the program. The format to declare a constant is first you have to write const keyword. After that you have to write constant name and as keyword and give data type of the constant and assign a value using the equal to operator to that constant. This is the example of declaring a constant pi here pi is the constant and it is declared as a single data type and this is the value to pi. So this is about how to manage data and how to use the data in our application. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial we will learn about mathematical operator and operations. Computer can perform mathematical calculations much faster than human beings. However, computer itself will not be able to perform any mathematical calculation without receiving instruction from the user. In VB 2010, we can write code to instruct the computer to perform mathematical calculations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and other kinds of arithmetic operations. In order for VB 2010 to carry out arithmetic calculation, we need to write code that involve the use of various arithmetic operators. 
the VB2010 arithmetic operators are very similar to the normal arithmetic operators. Only the slight variations. The plus and minus operator are the same while the multiplication operator use the star symbol and the division operator use the symbol which is shown in slide. We can see the table in which various operators are given and use of that operator is described. Plus operator for addition, minus for subtraction and exponential multiplication division modulus and integer division also displayed and example of these operators are also displayed. We have also seen this operator in previous example which is calculator. We have performed addition operation in that calculator example. So this is about arithmetic operator. This is the example how we can perform arithmetic operation in VB 2010. We have already seen this example. This is just purpose of explaining. We can see deem is used to create a variable and this is the assignment of value from text box to variable and this is the arithmetic operation which is the addition and the value of C is displayed in text box or label. So this is about arithmetic operation. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will learn about how to manipulate strings. So, we have taken four buttons in this form. One is the concatenate, second is the right, third is the left and last one is the length. So, in this application, we will do something like this. When we click on the concatenate button, two strings will be concatenate. Right, left and length will give idea about various function of strings. So now let's do this. We have also taken one label in which we have set text property of this label to welcome. Now let's see how to concatenate two strings in VB 2010. So click on the concatenate button and we can see code is generated. Now declare three strings. Now I am assigning various value to string 1, 2 and 3. I am giving string 1 to welcome string 2 to visual basic. Now I want to concatenate these both string. So write string 3. String can be concatenated in Visual Basic 2010 using two operator. One is the plus and second is the ampersand. Plus is commonly used string concatenation operator. So let's concatenate the string string 1 plus string 2. So this will concatenate these two string. Now I want to display this string 3 in label. So write label 1 dot text is equal to string 3. So we have written the code on button concatenate click event. Now let's see two function. One is the right and second is the left. When we want to extract the sum portion of the string from the right side then we can use this right function. So we have generated right click event of right and left button. Now I want to extract the portion of the string from the right side. So I am first declaring one string and I am storing the value of label into this string. Now I want to extract the portion of this string and I want to display this portion in, in text box. So let's take one text box. Now let's extract the string. Text box one dot text is equal to Microsoft dot Visual Basic. This is the part to access this write function. Dot write. 
now pass the string as a first parameter i want to extract from string so i have written string variable name and you can pass second parameter as a integer which accept the integer value and from which index you want to extract i want to extract four characters from the right side so i am writing four similarly we can also extract characters from the left side for that purpose left function is used so i am just changing here left so we have also written a code to extract the characters from the left side of the string now i want to count the length of the string so this can be done using the len function of visual basic 2010 now i want to display length of the string to text box 1 so write len which is a function used to count the length of the string and it accepts string as a parameter so i am writing label 1 dot text which is a string now let's run this application we click on the concatenate we can see string is concatenated which welcome to visual basic is printed now i want to extract portion of the right we can see asic is written lc which is four character from the left side and length of the string is 19 so this is about string manipulation thank you welcome friends in this video tutorial we will learn about if else conditioning in some situation when we want to take decision based on some condition in that type of situation we can use if else conditioning so in this tutorial we will learn and use if else statements so we have created one form which accepts marks of student so we will check grade for particular mark and we will write condition for that so let's click on the check button which will show the grade of the student based on the marks entered by the student in text box so let's generate the click event of check button now we want to check condition for the marks so let's declare one variable let's store the value of text box into mark variable now we want to give grade based on the condition now let's use the if now if we want to check that if mark is less than 35 then student is fail so so write if keyword then mark variable less than sign and 35 then i want to display message box so write message box and in message box show message that you are fail now i want to i want to use else if conditioning so write else if now i want to define second condition mark is greater than 35 and mark is less than 16 then message box pass class else if mark greater than 60 and less than 75 then first class so we have written condition which will show the grade class of student or grade of student so now let's run the application now enter the mark i am entering 20 and let's check the class we can see message box is displayed you are fail now enter 74 which is a first class so this is the use of if else we can check condition based on the condition we can take decision using the if else thank you welcome friends in this video we will learn select case conditioning statement we have already seen the if else statement in previous example select case statement is used when we want to check multiple condition we can use if else and else if conditioning but it will be too messy 
when condition are more so we will use select case in that case so in this example we want to check a class based on the grade so we will enter the grade in the text box and when we click on the check button it will show what is our class based upon the grade so let's use the select case first of all we will store the value of text box which is grade into one string variable so let's declare one string variable and store the text box value now we have stored the text box value in grade now to use select statement write select keyword then case now here pass the character based on which you want to take decision i am writing grd which accepts grade from the user now in between this block write various cases first case is if grade is a then i want to display message box that high distinction similarly we can write another case if grade is a minus then i want to display message box distinction i have written four cases a a minus b and c now i want to define default case so write case and else if none of these grade is entered then I, and i want to display fail so if none of grade from these characters is entered then it will show fail message box so let's run and check what happens using the select case conditioning now let's enter i am entering grade d we can see message box fail is displayed now enter a minus and let's check distinction message box is displayed so this is about select case conditioning statement which is used to handle the multiple conditioning situation and alternative to else if conditioning statement thank you welcome friends in this video tutorial we will see and learn looping loops are used when we want to do some repeatedly action until some condition is met so in this example we will see four next loop we have created one form which accepts one number as a input from text box and one button when we click on the button click event of button will execute code and it will calculate sum of numbers which is in between 1 to number entered by user so let's do this using the for next loop first i am declaring two variables one is the counter and to store sum i am declaring sum variable as integer now to use for next loop first i have to write for after that we have to use counter variable which is the looping variable so i am writing counter after writing counter we have to write equal to and from 1 to here we have to pass end value up to we want to execute this loop so i want to execute this loop until txt number dot text time we can also give step how much we want to increment each time loop i want to just increment by 1 so i am not writing step if you want to increment by 2 then we have to write step 2 now in this for and next we have to write code which we want to execute so i want to create the total so write some shorthand assignment operator and counter so what will this do it will each time add the value of counter into some variable so it will store the sum until this for loop is being executed now let's print the value of sum after completing this for next loop i want to display message box for sum so i am writing 
sum is concatenation operator which is plus or ampersand and some variable now let's run i am entering 25 i want to calculate the total of 1 to 25 numbers so the total is 325 if i enter here 3 then total will be 6 so this is about looping when you want to execute or do something repeatedly then we can use these loops there are many other types of loop like while loop do while loop and for each loop so this is about looping thank you welcome friends in this video tutorial we will see use of input box function input box function display a message box and it accept input in the form of string from the user it also display a title bar and default text in input box so let's see use of input box function when we click on this show input box button one input box will be display and it accept string from the user and based on that it will display message box so let's double click and generate click event of this button now to store the message which is entered by the user now to store the message which is entered by the user in input box we are declaring one variable team message as string now we are assigning value to message variable from input box which can be accessed using microsoft dot visual basic dot dot input box this function accepts certain parameter first is the prompt which what you want to prompt i want to prompt enter your message second parameter is the title for the input box i want to display message third is the default text which we want to display in text box i want to display enter your message fourth and fifth parameter are position of input box i am not writing position of input box now i am checking if message is entered or not so if message is not null then message box message else message box entered nothing now let's run we are clicking on the input box button you can see input box is displayed title is message prompt is enter your message and default text is enter your message we are entering this is input and click on the ok we can see message is displayed this is input so this is about input box function and how to use that function in application thank you welcome friends in this video tutorial we will learn how to use string function which is used to manipulate the strings so let's see first mid function the mid function is used to retrieve a part of text from a given phrase the format or a syntax of the mid function is given here first we have to write mid and we have to pass three parameters each parameter have a special purpose so let's see first phrase phrase is the string from which a part of text is to be retrieved so this is the text from which you want to extract the text position is the starting position of the phrase from which the retrieving process begins and n is the number of characters to be retrieved now let's see trim function the trim function trims the empty spaces on both sides of the phrase the format of trim is given here so this is the example of trim function it returns string value so we have to store the value of string in some particular variable or we have to set the controls property so this will remove the space from both side right and left so this is about trim function now let's see in string function the in string function looks for a phase 
that is embedded within the original phrase and returns the starting position of the embedded phrase. The format of instinct is given here. First, we have to write INSTR, which is in string. After that, we have to pass N parameter, original phase and embedded phase. Let's see purpose of each parameter, where N is the position where the instinct function will begin to look for the embedded phase. This is the example of instinct. We have passed visual basic as a original phrase and basic as embedded phase. We want to search basic. So, we are starting from first position and we are looking for basic at which position basic is start. So, at the 8th position basic is started so it will return integer value 8. So, we have to store the integer value in particular variable. Now, let's see two function ucase and lcase. ucase function converts all the characters of string to capital letter. Similarly, lcase function converts all the characters of a string to small letter. So, this is uppercase and lowercase function. To use uppercase and lowercase function, we have to use this syntax microsoft.visualbasic.ucase and we have to pass phrase which is a string variable. So, this is about string function which is used for manipulation of string. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will learn how to use various math function of Visual Basic. We have learned how to perform arithmetic function using standard mathematical operators. However, for more complex mathematical calculation, we need to use built-in math function in VB2010, means in VB.net. There are numerous built-in mathematical function in Visual Basic, which we will introduce them one by one. So, let's see first absolute function. Absolute returns the absolute value of a given number. The syntax of absolute function is math.abs and we have to pass number which we want to make absolute. It returns numeric value which we have to store in some variable. Now let's see exponential function. The exp of a number x is the exponential value of x. So exp is the function when we want to calculate e raised to x, here x is the exponential value, then we can use exp in bracket, we have to pass value of x. For example, here we have written e raised to 1. The value of x is 1, so it will return 2.71828182. This is the exponential value of e raised to 1. This is the syntax of exponential function. We have to write math.exponential function and we have to pass number value and it returns numeric value which we have to store in some variable. And this is the example of this function. You can see here we have stored the value which is written by this function. Now let's see fixed function. The fixed function truncate the decimal part of a positive number and returns the largest integer smaller than the number. However, when the number is negative, it will return smallest integer larger than the number. This is the example of fixed function. When we write fix 9.2, it returns 9 value. So, this is about fixed function. We doesn't need to write math.fix. We can directly use fix and it returns numeric value. Now let's see integer function. The int which is the integer function that converts a number into an integer by truncating its decimal part and the resulting integer is the largest integer that is smaller than the number. For example, if we want to convert 2.4 which is the float value into integer then we can write int in bracket, we have to pass value and we have to store this value into particular numeric variable and it will return 2. So, this is integer function. Now, let's see round function. The round function is the function that rounds up the number to a certain number of decimal places. The format of round function is round in bracket, we have to pass two parameters. One is the n and m, which means to round a number n to m decimal places. 
For example, here we want to round this value 7.2567 and we want to round up to two decimal places. So it will round and return the value 7.26 which is rounded to two decimal places. This is the syntax of round function. We have to write math.round and it will return the numeric value which we have to store in particular variable. So this is about math function which is used to do complex calculation. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial, we will see some numerical formatting function. So the format function is very powerful formatting function which can display the numeric values in various forms. Mainly, there are two types of format function. One of them is a built-in or a predefined format, while another one can be defined by the user. So, it is the user-defined formatting function. So, let's first see predefined function. Syntax of predefined format function is like this. We have to write format. After that, we have to pass n which is the number is to be formatted and second parameter is the style of number in which number is to be formatted. So let's see various style argument which is used to format the number. So this is the various style argument. First is the general number. It displays the number without having separator between thousands. Fixed argument displays the number without having separators between thousand and rounds it up to two decimal places. Standard argument displays the number with separators or a separator between thousand and rounds it up to two decimal places. Currency style argument is used to display the number with a dollar sign in front as a separators between thousands as well as rounding it up to two decimal places. Percent style argument is used to convert the number to percentage form. The display a percentage sign and rounds it up to two decimal places. We will see the program of this predefined formatting style. Now let's see user defined function. The format of user defined function is similar to predefined function. Just we have to pass the user defined style of formatting. Although it is known as a user defined format, we still need to follow certain formatting style. So let's see example of this user defined function. So first example, we are passing style only zero. So it rounds to whole number without separator between thousand. So output will be like this. Second with 0, 0.0 rounds to one decimal place without separator between thousand. So output of this example will like this. And if you want to round up to two decimal places, so we have to write 0, 0.00. So the output now will change and it will look like this. Now, if you want to add separator, then we have to write hash separator and, and which format we want to give. Here we want to give format like this 781 separator 234.58. So we are writing 0, 0.00 for two decimal places and format like this. So this is all user defined formats. We can define our own format. We will also see example of this user defined formatting. Now let's see example. So we have created one form in which we have taken five labels and two buttons. We have already code. We can see we have passed number and format. We have also written code for user defined formatting style. Here we have passed various style. Let's see now effect of this formatting style. When we click on the predefined button, the various number, these number are formatted and it is displayed in label. So we can see this is the general number, fixed number, standard, currency and person. Now let's see effect of user defined formatting. We can see we have used user defined function to format the number. It will show number according we have styled the number. So this is about formatting function we can format our number as per our requirement and as per our style thank you welcome friends in this video tutorial we will learn about how to format date in various formats 
There are two ways to format dates. First is the predefined format function and other is the user defined format function. Date and time can be formatted using predefined format and also user defined format. So this is the predefined format. We have to write format function and we have to pass first parameter as a date. So we are passing here current date and general date is a one type of format. What this general date format does? Format the current date and time. Long date format displays the current date in long format. Short date displays the current date in short format. Long time displays the current time in long and short time displays the current time in short. So we will see the example of this format and what effect is applied to date. Now instead of general date you can also use the abbreviated form G. So if you want to format the general date then you can write format in braces first parameter now and second as in double quote G. Likewise you can also format for long time you can use abbreviated format T as for short time you can abbreviate abbreviated format small t. So this is about predefined format function. Now let's see user defined format. Beside using the predefined format you can also use the user defined formatting function. The general format user defined for date time is format in braces expression and second parameter style. Now let's see example of user defined format. First is the example in which we want to just display current month and date. So write M. If you want to display the current month in double digit. So we have to write MM. If you want to display abbreviated name of the month then we can write MMM. If you want to display full name then we have to write 4 times M. Likewise we can also give special characters and format style. The, if you want to display date using slash sign then we can do this using this format. So these are the all formats which is different from each other and we can use this format in our application. Now let's see example of this. We have created one form in which we have taken a text box and label control. On these buttons click event we will call predefined function and on these buttons click event we will call user defined function. We have already code for this. We have written now for today's date and general date, long date, short date, long time and short time as a style. We have also written for user defined formats. Now let's run. Now click on the predefined button. We can see the general date contains whole date and time with pm. We can also see for long date, short date, long time and short time. Likewise let's click on user defined function. As per the format given by us in user defined function, we can see here only month and date is displayed. Here only month, here full month is displayed. Here only month is displayed. So these all are formatted using user defined format function. So this is about formatting date in Visual Basic. We can format date on our requirement of style. So this is about date. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video tutorial we will learn about checkbox. Checkbox is a control which is used to select multiple items. So we can select items using checkbox. For example, if you open the font dialog box then you can see various font options are available to select which is a checkbox. So now let's drag and drop the checkbox and see example of checkbox. Now let's set property of this checkbox. I want to calculate the price of selected items. I am writing one item printer and price is 500 rupees. I am also setting its name property to chk printer. Now I am copying this control and making copy of this control and setting its property. You can see I have taken four checkbox, one button, one label control and one text box. Now when I click on the calculate, 
the item which is selected price of this item will be calculated and the sum of this price will be displayed in this text box so let's code and let's use this example in our application so generate the click event of this button and declare variable for each checkbox so i am declaring p for printer as integer and assigning value to that printer to 500 similarly i am declaring other variables now i have declared one sum variable also sum will be used to store the sum of these items so now we check if checkbox is checked then we will add cost of the item to sum so let's check checkbox chk add dot checked is equal to true then we will add sum plus h now for printer we will check chk printer dot checked is equal to true then sum plus p which is the cost of printer similarly for all item we will do this thing now we have checked the check boxes and assign the cost to sum now let's display this total into text box so txt total dot text is equal to sum now on the click event sum will be displayed so now let's run the application we can see form is created we are selecting mouse and keyboard and calculate cost which is 700 if we add headphone and calculate then cost will be changed to so this is about checkbox and use of checkbox thank you welcome friends in this video tutorial we will learn about radio controls radio button is a control similar to checkbox but radio button is mutually exclusive so like a checkbox we cannot select multiple radio buttons we must have to select one radio buttons among the group of radio buttons for example if we want to select gender of student or gender of any person then we must have to select gender male or female so this is the example of radio button so let's see that example in our application to make the radio button mutually exclusive we must have to place radio button in group box so first go to the toolbox and drag one group box now we are setting group box property go to properties set its text property to gender so its caption will be changed now i am placing the radio button in this group box so go to toolbox and take two radio buttons now set its property i am setting one radio button's property to female and its name property to rdo female and second radio button is for male now i want to give effect like this that when user select male gender is shown automatically in text box so i am taking one label for displaying message your gender is and i am also taking one text box to display gender and giving text text box name property to txt gender now let's generate the click event of radio button so double click on the radio button it will generate checked change event so now i want to write txt gen text is equal to male same way and writing event txt gen dot text is equal to female now let's run this application so male is already selected so its event is automatically generated and it displays male gender now when i click on the female the gender is changed to your gender is female so this way we can use 
radio button we can also use checked property to check whether the radio button is checked or not like check boxes so this is about radio button thank you welcome friends in this video tutorial we will learn how to create simple web browser basically everyone like to navigate internet using commercially produced web browsers such as internet explorer produced by microsoft or those open source browser designed by the experts such as microsoft opera and latest chrome created by google however isn't it cool that if you can create your very own web browser that you can customize to your own taste yes you can do that in vb 2010 and pretty easy too in this chapter i will show you how to create simple web browser and get running in it few minutes so let's see how to create web browser i have created one form now i am taking one text box to enter the url of website now i am taking one button to navigate the browser to this website and setting its property to go now vb.net 2010 provides a control which is the web browser control which is in toolbox so go to web browser control drag it to your form and resize according your requirement i am also setting its property to my browser now i want to navigate to web page on the click event of go so double click and generate the click event right my browser dot navigate and in between braces you have to pass string which contains the address or url of page so i am retrieving it from text box 1 now let's run this application i am entering http double slash www dot google dot com and i am clicking on go so it will take some time to load the page now we can see the google page is loaded in our browser if we can search in google that vb.net it will search not that we have to resize our browser according to our requirement so this is about browser we can also set its various property we can also retry cookie in this browser but but that is beyond our scope so this is about web browser in vb.net thank you welcome friends in this video tutorial we will learn how to handle error in visual basic 2010 error handling is an essential procedure in visual basic 2010 programming because it can help make the program error free an error free program can run smoothly and efficiently and the user doesn't have to face all the sort of problem such as program cache or system hang errors often occur due to incorrect input from the user for example the user might make the mistake of attempting enter a text to a box that is designed to handle only numeric value such as the weight of the person the computer will not be able to perform arithmetic calculation for text therefore will create an error these errors are known as a synchronous errors therefore a good programmer should be more alert to parts of the program that could trigger errors and should write errors handling code to help the user in managing the errors there are two techniques to handle error in vb 2010 let's see one by one first is the on error go to syntax visual basic 2010 still support the vb6 error handling syntax that is the on error go to program label structure so now let's see the example of on error go to label here we have generated one click event and on that we are dividing number by second number if number is not entered and text is entered then it will generate the error so now let's see each statement one by one 
here we have started on error go to error handler this is the label which will execute if error occurs now this is the code which likely to generate the error if second number is text or first number is text then division can't be possible so it will generate error now here is the label error handler and we have to specify by colon so when the error occurs this will execute and we are setting different label property when error generates we are setting lbl answer dot text is equal to error and we are making this label to visible and making the labels text property to one of the entry is not number try again so this is about on error go to label now let's see most familiar and most used try catch and end try approach this is a new approach provided by vb 2010 the structure looks like this first we have to write try and in between try and catch we have to write statement which might generate errors we have to write catch exception variable which is the temporary variable as an exception and statement to deal with the exception here we have to write statement that deal with this exception and finally we have to write and try now let's see example of this try catch and try block this is the same example which we have seen in previous previous type so we have written the code that might generate error in try block and to handle that error we are writing the code or statement in catch and end try block so this is about error handling in visual basic 2010 it is very easy to handle error in vb.net so this is all about handle errors in vb.net thank you